the, the kids in your class? Are they leaning more towards spirituality? Like, what is technology doing to the young mind? I said, yeah, my, he's pretty bad. So this is the thing. This is, this is why, this is why I like convenience. I feel like it. And, and you, you guys go deeper, faster to the point. Like, you guys, you know, be like the con. Uh, Certificate on every absolute <laughs> that thing. Because it's, it's about nothing and everything. Yeah. Like, 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 you straight from the south side. Like, 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 uh, I'm just so happy to be here right now. Real Rap Podcast, 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 Podcast. Hey, we are back again. Season two of Real Rap Podcast. This is amazing. I'm so glad you guys decided to come back. And for our first guest for season two, I have an amazing young man. Uh, this gentleman right here is a professor of, uh, and that is, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It's cognition and co- culture and cognition. Uh, that's, the name, that's the name of the class. That's the name of the class. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give you a second to get your whole intro in because I'm, I'm, I don't want to trash it. He's also, uh, also a writer, um, author. Oh, yeah, you, you twist the uh, little thing right there. Also, uh, a microphone engineer <laughs> and a teacher of today's youth. So this for me is a- an incredible uh, opportunity to get to talk to this uh, talk to this gentleman and get an insight on what it is to be young in school and the leaders of the future. So I appreciate you coming here. If you could uh, do me a favor, let everybody know your name. Uh, how long have you been in the city? What you got? Oh. Oh, thanks, Mike. So I see you looking at that camera. That's three cameras. We got three. Any, any one of them, I think they are. So that that guy is you. You're this one. This one. Yeah. If you, you really want to lock eyes with the listeners, okay. And that's I, just, I like this okay. into the into okay. the soul. Okay. This is high tech. This is this is fancy. Yeah. Man. Um, no, it's great to be here. I'm uh, Sapir Bakil. Um, yeah, associate professor in School of Education mm-hmm. and Social Policy, and then the course is called Zer. Culture and cognition. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nah, I had to have that written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me struggling <laughs> with culture. <laughs> that's that's the formal title. Um, been in Chicago area. I lived up in Evanston. Okay, where the, where the campus is at? Uh, six years. Okay. So this is my sixth year. People ask me. I was like, I was down at EYC mm-hmm. just two nights ago. My friend. Uh, my friend is a professor down there, and he invited us. What we do, the professors say the comedians do. Mm-hmm. You guys invite each other to your yeah, right. That's interesting. And so I got I got an invite uh, by one of my good friends, is a professor at UIC, um, to go speak to their their, their class, small little graduate seminar. Uh, and I was telling one of us uh, graduate students that was from Chicago, mm-hmm. um, and uh, that you know this is home now to me. Like, I know, like, I'm not, I don't have to validate it because yeah. as, as an immigrant, I move like every three years. So if I'm somewhere five years or more, I feel connected to the place. So we're going to get into that for sure. Yeah. Uh, originally Iranian. Oh. Yeah, that's oh. right. Next. And you were born out there? Yeah. Okay. Is this pre or post on me? I know I'm getting that. Even that's, no, I was great. The fact that you even know that. Yeah, my guy's like a smart guy. <laughs> um, yeah, so Khomeini, uh, I told us Khomeini. Me, so got a, I got a funny story about him later, but that's stupid. It's an amazing sense of uh, So he, you know, he was the kind of leader of the uh, revolution. Yeah, that, that happened in 1979. So I was born in '83. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah, eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I was I was there from 1980 to 1986. So you get the stories from like. Oh, we fought one. Yes. Exactly. And Iran used to be like the, the, the Los, Los Angeles. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, mm-hmm. woman, mm-hmm. Woman, mm-hmm. woman in a bikini. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Nobody married. Yeah. yeah. According, to, uh, according to the nostalgia, I think, you know, that I think is probably like sugar coated and romanticized. But yeah, there's definitely yeah. for my own parents, right? There's definitely this, this, this romantic past of, of an Iran that was free and open mm-hmm. you know that was america that was america's best friend rose colored glasses yeah people, people forget that people think it was always israel like no like iran was iran was america's most strategic ally mm-hmm. free the revolution now now we're the you know now we're now 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 we're the, i don't i don't even know so i mean and i grew up in a military family and 
I mean, I wasn't really doing like my due diligence to get the knowledge, even in my youth, or even being, you know, kind of really joined with that the the, the life and being in the military family. Having a, my pop is is directly tied to you know, things going on in the world. And I, you know, I was just removed from it. I just know that there was a feeling. It's, uh, desert areas bad. Those people. I didn't. I didn't have time in my mind at you know in my young age to. All right, pick all right, Saudi Arabia. There are allies at this point, or, or uh, Iran, Qatar, allies, X, Y, Z, and this is what this means. Blah, 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 blah. And you know, the, the older I get, the more I, you know, I kind of want to be more present in what's going on around the world. But still, like, yeah, like the, the attention span, even mine, like my attention span is getting reprogrammed to be like, where? So, to like, who's going to remember? Like Iran, and then I don't even know how many people are kind of so in the in the my world in the comedy world. I don't know how many people, unless there's an, uh, like a uh, an Iranian comic that gets on stage and then gives us a little slice of it. Otherwise, people are just like, hey, "Ain't I supposed to be like scared of those guys and chocolate?" That's it. I'm not like God, it's just at that level. And <laughs> but he's on man. My my um my mom's ex husband. Mm. I hated that guy so much. Mm. Mm. Damn, I'm so glad that they got divorced. But yeah, he was just like one of those regular schmegler white dudes from Aristotle. And he would, he would, I think he thought it was like charming or something. He would always tell me the stories before I met Shabon. I don't even know if there was between Iran and Iraq, you know, <laughs> uh, just a past it's, aggressive. It's kind of like, I'm like, okay, well, that's so, you, so you're, I get it, you're ignorant. But what's, 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 what, 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 you know. But I guess there's some truth to that, right? Like people, like the school system here doesn't, like how 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 should people know about me, right? You know, and it's not, it's not like unless you're you know following the news or listening to Fadi Zakaria or sure, you know what I mean? You should be. I, I would think that people are actually looking for information mm. on like uh, those kind of social issues, and probably I would imagine the people that are looking for their information already have their mind made up and then that's the information that they find because right. these days with your phone that's exactly what you could do you can make your mind up first and then go find the facts right to back up when <laughs> yeah back in back up, back up. Back to your great question about technology and how it's impacting young yeah. people i mean there's a whole group of people who study just what you just made like that mean that feedback how it actually works like how the algorithms just work in such a way as what's it called confirmation bias oh yeah, yeah you know and so people you know like that's that that's real right oh yeah um but the flip of it is anyway we're getting on a tangent but the, but the flip of it is that like we're sound we sound like you know you made this point in my class right we sound kind of old sitting here like worrying you know you know hand wringing over technology right right kid the kid it's like it's the air they breathe and you know there, yes, I think I think there's some excess for sure, mm -hmm. but there's probably some excess of worry too. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, there was definitely some a couple of guys like us sitting on the couch one day going, "These escalators are too fast, bro." Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, walking up the stairs. What are we gonna do? Imagine what's gonna happen in 15 years. Oh, they're gonna have sidewalks in the the airport. Right. <laughs> Crazy ass. <laughs> why, do, why do people step on those? I don't know. Why, why do people step on them and stand still? I've never wanted to take my travel bag in the <laughs> other side, the temple. And I'm an old lady that just came from Baltimore, Maryland. That's <laughs> more right in the Right in the middle, too. Right in the exact middle spot. <laughs> All right. It's still, we started on Mariah. And now, is this. Um, you ended up leaving out of there. Uh, your family wanted the opportunities that were presented here. Were they escaping something? Was there a, a reason to leave? <sighs> Everyone said, like, yeah. So the, the reason to leave is because the new government after the revolution. Mm -hmm. the, the quick story is that uh, before the revolution, the Shah was in power. Mm -hmm. Right. So people, I'm, not, I'm sure you know about the Shah just based on your Khomeini question. That was the, that was the government in Iran. And that was the king. Shah means king. And it was a dictator, you know, it was a dictator. Yeah. And so people were rising up against them in the millions, including my parents and a lot of my family members. And a lot of the Iranians who are currently here, many of them participated in the revolution that brought about the current Islamic government. 
These students demonstrating in Tehran shouting death to the Shah pledge allegiance to the Islamic movement of the Ayatollahs. The number killed in Tehran since the beginning of the month is probably well over a hundred. But people in this crowd were saying and believing 7,000 had been killed. Emotions over the dead and the rumors of dead are high. Every day here now the demonstrations and arrests go on. Rumors in Tehran say people are being armed and may soon start firing back at the troops. News there would be some kind of announcement about a new government came after yet another day of running confrontations in the center of Tehran. The army kept moving today, trying to head off the demonstrations to keep them where possible from throwing inside. This dogged military resistance to the anti-shah disturbances part of an effort to buy the Shah as much time as possible in which to create a political solution. But the sad and tragic thing that basically happened was that the government that, that came after this revolution, I mean, like they actually had a revolution, you know, it's like, and so sometimes people from Iran are like, we, we can actually, you know, we can share our experience because, you know, the different people call it a revolution right now. Yeah. And, you know, here in the U.S., right. It's like, it's, it's remarkable to me that my parents were in a generation where the people were like, we need to have a revolution. Yeah. And then they had a revolution, like a for real millions of people on the street overthrowing the U.S. backed shop. I mean, it was, it was maybe the most significant, I'm not, you know, I'm not in poli side, but I think it's, it's considered one of the most significant events in the late 20th century. Sure. You know what I mean? In 79, that's what Carter. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, and then, and then right, you know, and then right after that rate. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but so in the sense of, wow, what a success, what a, you know, what a, what a kind of burst of, 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 um, I guess joy, you need, you know, but. The tragedy is that the government that replaced the shop was like yeah. twice as bad. The devil, you know. Yep, exactly. And so, so why do we leave? Because yeah, society, you know, like shut down. All of a sudden, women women had to wear a hijab. And my mom grew up her whole life, like you know, in, in a quote unquote free Iran. Next thing you know, next thing you know, overnight, women are second class citizens. Mm. You know, women who were once judges or esteemed, you know. Um, members of the professional class all of a sudden were given like the meaty jobs to kind of really you know mm -hmm. assert the, the patriarchy the islamic patriarchy mm -hmm. so it got real dark you know and then there was a war and then right after that the war started between iran and iraq mm -hmm. and that was when our country was down to saddam hussein people forget right. that too that was like we used to be allies to saddam hussein we as in america Mm. And so there was a huge war broke out, massive war, a, mil a million, um, uh, a million to two million casualties mm. across across both countries. You know, so what? In, in that milieu, everyone was trying to leave. Everyone was still trying to leave. That's that's the sad part. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Not not to get you know what I mean, but that's that's the reality. Or, or yeah, I mean, well, right now things are getting kind of heated in that area. But before we dive off into that, let's get back to the uh, to the only give me the only give me a trouble, man. No, 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 I'm a I know. <laughs> now I said that you get five of that. It was on the force and all all right. <laughs> And I was like, don't worry. Don't worry. Like, I know you're a professor if you ever see the Lord of Things, I'm not going to ask you. We're, we're just going to talk about your kids. We're not talking about it. See, that's all. We, nothing bad is a white soul. You just walk the tiny road with no safety net. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, end up leaving there, come with your family, and then you touch down where in the States. And I know you moved around uh, quite a bit. Yeah. So where did you touch down in the States? And what was your first impression? What age were you? First impressions of America. Thank you for asking me that. Um, Milwaukee. Mm. I was three years old, so I don't remember. Sure. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. So as far as your mind goes, America, pretty, pretty much. I mean, that's kind of a deep statement, though, because my wife, who, you know, who is not Iranian, sure, tells me that I often dream in person, mm -hmm. which is like the more, which is like, I didn't even know that about myself. You know, some, you know, it's like, oh, shit. Like, so I think the first language I learned was Persian or Farsi. Sure. And, and so that so that's my first language, obviously. Um, English is my dominant language now. Sure, but you know, it's it's, it's in my mind somewhere deep, right? Like sure. that connection to the language, to the culture. But in terms of my memories, yeah, I don't. I think the memories I have of Iran are made up. 
or from the story and the pictures. And I'm an actual, you know what I mean? Like three years old, you might get a splash here. Four years old, you might get a an outline, a hazy outline there. And then I think you know, my first memories are like five for me. I know yeah. you go back, you know, further. How about you? How about yourself? Like four or five. -ish. Yeah. Yeah. And but like I said, it's just a hazy. I'm probably adding more to it as the years go by, but I do have a little splash and a little fuzzy this and that from here and there. That's interesting. Yeah. All right. And then so you, you land Milwaukee, you're three years old. And then what, where's the journey? Uh, so for us, so basically it's all, it's all like, like, um, it's the story of my parents, uh, pursuit of education. So we were able to come here because they had student weeklies to study. My dad was studying math and my mom was studying chemistry. Mm. And so they got a student visa. I mean, that's how it works. You know, that's the whole higher ed system. Like the the ticket to America for Iranians then and now mm -hmm. is often through, you know, higher ed. Right. And so like, so um, if there's going to be a contribution that you're exactly because it's, it's good. It's good for it's good for America. Right. Um, you know, matter of fact, like you get all these tech companies, like, like so much of the talent oh, yeah. is, you know, foreign talent, you know, sorry. I mean, so the CEO of Google is Indian. Oh, that's it. Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. You know, uh, everywhere, everywhere you look. Yeah. I think the inventors of Google is what Jay Fisher and Sergey Brin or something. Yeah. 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 He's from wherever he's from. Not America. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Elon yeah. us or, 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 or go to the, uh, just go to the, um, engineering and computer science departments. Like sure. So many, you know, and it's like with yeah. so many Iranian actually professors. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a kind of an interesting, like, you know, what, like how that happened? Like we're enemies. And so, and so they're, and so Iran is mad about that too. Right. It was like rain drain. It's like, well, stop, stop taking our, you know, stop taking our. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so they came for grad school mm -hmm. and then their journey was basically my childhood. So Milwaukee had started and then they went to Kansas. So I was in Man Manhattan, Kansas. Oh my God, Manhattan, Kansas. Oh, you here. And I was, when I was working in, I, I, I did construction in, in Omaha, Nebraska, uh, for six years. I was union carpenter mm. and I was out in Manhattan, Kansas. Oh, so for like a year and some change building. The USDA, um, like there was a big USDA wow. building out there. I was out there for a oh, while. Wow. Oh, oh, rip. Wow. Of <laughs> course. That's, that's me. That's me kindergarten through third grade. Ah, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. The little, wow. there's an army base right there, right? Is that, I'm not sure. Okay. That wasn't work. All right. Go. The Wildcats, right? Can, can, uh, Kansas State, uh, Wildcats. I'm not about right. Yeah. 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 I remember as a kid, um, not a huge sports fan, but I remember mm -hmm. having a uh, toilet paper with the, you know, with the, with the, with the Jayhawks. <laughs> yeah, this kick, the watch at the Jayhawks are like, you know, so that, that was the, um, oh, Midwest lives and dies for the, the forest scene. Yeah. 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 So yeah, so Mil so Manhattan, Kansas, you know, a little apple. I had a really, I loved it as a kid. I had a little bike at my, my neighborhood. Yeah. I had my bike around. And then, uh, and then my parents split up. Okay. And then that kind of led to more moves. So I was East Coast for a few years, Boston with my mom, mm. Maine. My dad ended up to Maine. His, his first job was That's there. Third grade? Um, that was actually four, yeah, fourth, fourth and fifth grade. Okay. okay. East Coast. And then my parents like officially split and then we moved to California. My mom and I did. Okay. So we were at Orange County, Southern California, mm -hmm. an hour outside of Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, I mean, so what kind of now at this point in time and you're in Orange County, that's junior high, high school? Yeah, both. Okay. And what kind of what kind of student are you generally? I'm a nerd. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I was killing it. I mean, I was but I was like a cool nerd. Okay. I, mean, I was like a I was like a mis I was like a mischievous, you know, yeah, and I, I like I was a fun kid. Like I, I I was smart and I had like the resources. Yeah. Just me, it was just me and my mom. We live like in this little condo. My mom was like just a great supportive mom. And she worked a lot, so she would come home. Um, like when she would when she would change jobs, she wouldn't change where we live. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't have to change schools. You know what I mean? So she, so blessed, you know, you know, gotta love moms, right? But she was like driving in that LA traffic, like an hour and a half of work, hour and a half back. My dad was in the you know East Coast. So basically what that meant was like, you know, I had I had free, you know, free range to 
to just do to do me until like you took that route of I'm gonna buckle down at these books kick it great. I had a good yeah, it definitely that was definitely part of it. I was grinding, but but it was I also had a good group of friends who like motivated me. One like one or two guys in particular who um who, you know, who didn't let me slip. And then we also were doing you know, we also were having fun. You know? Okay. Yeah. So it's still a little bit of debauchery, but you know at the end of the day. Now is that something that's instilled in you as part of the the immigrant up bringing like hey we're here this is this is the chance don't don't mess around with this or whatever don't blow it or because i mean I, my my girls yeah. and my girls immigrant and it it seems like like when, if you've been with your she you know your old lady for x amount of time gorgeous smart funny intelligent after a while you're just like that's my old lady and then you might be somewhere and a guy's checking around while you guys are at the White Sox game, like, because it's new hot. It's to him. Right. It's, sure. it's your old lady. Like, you've seen it with a booger at the end of the notes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've seen her odd pretty panties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I love you. <laughs> You're gorgeous. But, you know, sometimes it's just like, uh, you know, that's my shit. Right. But then somebody else might look at it like, Right. Hey, that's a nice dress. You, you want to put him through a wall. Right, right. <laughs> and I kind of feel like that's to a large degree. You're born in America. It's your old lady. Like, you're just like, mm. yeah, the opportunity. No, I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was wondering what the connection was. I was like, yeah. But if an immigrant comes in, it's like, well, who is this that just walked into the barn? What? And that's what, that's what cracks me up about. Yes, everything you're saying, it's, that's how it is, I think, especially for like my parents' generation, mm. right? And they, that's why you have immigrants like my parents and other you know, other Middle Eastern folks. But I think I think it's true for immigrants in general. Sure, they don't give a shit where they live in America, right? My parents home, like you know, man, I'm so snobby now as a, as a as a 40 year old man. Sure, I would I would live like in five cities. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't I would never I would I would literally like completely downgrade my quality of life or career to to you know to live in certain cities because I've come to expect that. Immigrants are like, doesn't matter, my hand counts. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good enough. We're good to go. Yeah, my, my dad currently lives in St. Cloud, uh, you know, Minnesota. Okay. And he loves it. Doesn't have a complaint at all. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think, um, I think what you're saying is, you know, correct. Like the immigrants come here and they have the immigrants. <laughs> immigrants come to the US and they're looking for, you know, improvement. It's a mad, I, mean, I can't imagine. Being a full grown adult and like leaving to a different country, starting from scratch. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I can never, I can never, I can never really grasp my parents or my uncles and aunts. Like, I don't really get their enough of their lives. Mm. I'm like, wow. Well, they say that what youth is wasting on the young. I feel, I feel like a lot of immigrants are like America is wasting on Americans. <laughs> yeah, I don't need one. Like, like, see, is there? <laughs> like as as an immigrant in general, do you is there like a class or a school or a meeting or a gathering or is it a subconscious thing where you guys go, all right, I need my Adidas tracksuit top. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, I'm from a different country. <laughs> no, that's, that's, well, like dark, this looks cool. This is America. I'm in Yeah, well, Dolce, I'm in the country. Yeah, you no, know, you got that. What it is? That's what it is. What is your journey? What is your journey through academia? And where does it start? So, are you in school? You're watching. You're watching teachers and seeing the influence or seeing the the process. You like that? That's what I'm wanting to. Do. No, no. Okay. No, 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 no. Um. Well, I was sorry about my parents. It, it starts. It starts there. You know, we were kind of joking about it, but like, yeah, the immigrant. The immigrant Middle Eastern or specifically immigrant Iranian dad is like a is like a thing, right? Oh. Like they're they're the you know you have to be lawyer, doctor, engineer, sure. right? Well, that's you know we 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 people know that, right? Same for Indian. That's the same for African. Uh, it's the same for some some African guy. And actually, like in high school, so my dad was like that for sure, mm. and he was like pushing, like you're gonna you know we're gonna like you know. So his attitude towards school was like get whatever little dumb Walmart they have for you out of the way. <coughs> and then 
I'll give you the real stuff. So, mm-hmm. so, so the perspective on like American schools, the, the, it's funny now because I'm like studying them and I'm in the education. But the perspective on American schools that I think I had growing up was that they give the kids like some bullshit. Oh, we're behind. We're yeah. sure. And then like, 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 some easy stuff and expectations are really yeah. low and like everyone complains about homework and it's like very, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, and so, um, yeah, there was a huge emphasis on like, get your shit. Of course, you're gonna get eight. Are you kidding me? You're gonna get yeah. This in this school system, you're about to come home with a with a B plus. What are you? What the fuck is wrong with you? And they milk and honey. Yeah, or like they're getting hamp. Yeah, and then and then there was gonna be additional work, right? So I was saying, like, my parents split. You know, like the American dad, but like, when they're divorced, like the divorced dad, and then and then the kids come over the summer to see. Sure, sure. They spoil the kid. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like a thing, right? In America, like, like he was putting you to work. My dad never learned that cultural trust. Uh, he would put, he would make me like do housework, yard work, rake the leaves, mm. lots of academic work. Uh, I would, I kind of hated it at times. I work it. I was like away from my friends in California. But now, you know, I, um, I have, I'm grateful for, for that sure. word that he put it to me. So in high school, my best friend was this Nigerian guy to this day. Uh, he, he's my best friend. This, this dude named Timmy Tope Shinui. Nice. Shout out to Timmy Tope. Shout out to Timmy Tope. Um, and he was this very interesting, special guy. He actually doesn't even like Nigerian as a, as a label. I'm going to say that before he, he, he gets on my case. He, All right. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. He goes more Yorba. Um, but the thing, the thing that was interesting about us and then our, our dads and our connections and, what, and how you know, relates to my academic journey. Mm-hmm. He was uh, from an African family. He was like the star football player of our team. I mean, we had a big, like suburban Orange County um, mm-hmm. football, like, big football program. You know, sure. like uh, and he and he rose up as like the star of that of that team. Like you know, crazy killing it, like four hundred yards a game all the hell season, being recruited to play in college. Okay, but his but his dad was like. You're going to MIT. Like, we <laughs> were doing engineer. Uh, no, but so there was some kind of push and pull. And then when I started hanging out with him, my dad was like, Where are you going? You know, why are you always at this, this, this kid's house? And then talk to his dad. And, and then his dad was like, Who's this Middle Eastern kid always coming to our house? I need to talk to his dad. So we put the dads on a conference call. They became like best friends. Mm-hmm. They had the same philosophy on education yeah. out in America. And they were like, okay, go ahead, children, be, be friends. Mm. And so that was a, um, do you think there's uh, like the values that you kind of maybe absorb through your, your pop or your family in general kind of like bled through you guys? And that's what caused, because that's interesting that you guys could find each other and rebelling against it. Right. Re- right. So, I mean, yeah. we both, yeah. we both resented our dad a little bit. Sure. We both were trying to do my bad. Yeah. Bobbed over. Immigrants with with interests in other areas, but then right. boom, you get grounded back to academia. I right. think your parents get ground each other with these kids just don't understand how right. they got it. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. exactly. So, that, so, so like, so that was a bit. I mean, and she, she was actually a big part of my journey because she was always one step ahead of me uh, academically uh, and, and athletically. He was just like the dominant friend. <laughs> but he was, but he was loving, and he was like, he was always in high school, especially. He would push me, and now yeah, yeah, he'd be like, the way, and like in a very like you know, toxic masculine, what would be called kind the of best, way, the best way, yeah, and like bitch, what you got, yeah, yeah, yeah. pussy, you got a minus, fuck you, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, what? yeah, what? I don't deserve, I didn't deserve that, but but it was all we pushed each other, yeah, he really pushed me in high school, and and uh, and his older brother was also in a similar so there's a, there a whole ecosystem okay <clears throat> but from there um yeah i go and study engineering like a good you know like a good iranian boy like i i was sort of like implanted in my head that you're gonna you know that you're gonna be an engineer so you wouldn't call this a natural passion it's a it's a engineering was what i'm doing now for sure fuck okay. sure i'm sorry i cut you up no 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 no, no. so i did engineering i got my master's in uh, electrical engineering my master's I worked and interned for a bunch of like engineering companies in the LA area. And I don't know if your listeners are familiar, you know, are familiar, like the LA area is like, but you know, ground zero of the military industrial complex. So you come to you, like you fly into LAX and you drive in a three mile radius 
right, in the right in, in the El Segundo area, right? You're you're seeing you know Boeing, Norfolk Grumman, and then Lockheed Martin. I mean, they're they're like that's the industry. I mean, the Bay Area has Silicon Valley. And shadow up in LA's tech ecosystem is dominated by the military companies. Right? Sure, sure. Um, now, so you know that's in the backdrop. That's not, I'm not really thinking about that too much at that time. But I will point out that I started at UCLA, 18 years old, weeks after 9/11 happened. So that's important. That's of course that's a part of the story. I mean, it's important in general. But it was important in my own in my own shit, in my own development. So you own- immediately became public enemy number. <laughs> yeah, but mostly most of the shit I got was from my mom and friends. But yeah, okay. <laughs> but now that's amazing. So it must not have been because in my mind's eye, weeks after nine eleven, if you're in anywhere though Midwest, that's going to be a different outcome than in my mind. Again, uh, two thousand and one. We all kind of love each other, California, Orange County, right? Mm-hmm. And so there was no real pushback or, or resentment or because there was a, for, I, I want to say there was a hive mind in America. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was no, it was deep. I mean, in terms of like, did I get any shit for being around? Hey, brown boy. Hey, so, he saying this and that. And so, blah, blah, blah. so I'll say like, and it's why I've, I've, I've written about this a little bit. I have a little bit of stuff about this. Um, for me personally, right? I think it's important just to kind of be, to say that because there's a whole, you know, different folks get cash held much harder and faster depending on their class, even religion, right? Or not, um, uh, language, ability, all that kind of stuff. But for me, honestly, the most of the shit I got in my life around that was more in the context of like teasing from friends. Okay. You know, and so there, there, were, there are a couple exceptions. So I, I had like maybe my wildest, racial incident and i and i say this with humility i don't know i don't know your experience but i I, I got some very close black friends like i mentioned and i know this shit and i got and my wife is black so i know the shit that other you know minorities go through me and, and my shit pales in comparison to that mean so you know but um my my craziest one was when i was a freshman at ucla and my roommate was pledging for this fraternity at the yet and somehow, I don't know, like back then, like we had dorm phone or something. Right. Uh, somehow, whatever he is, like frat brothers uh, calls and I pick up the phone and he's drunk and and I get all the sin and terrorist motherfucker. Yeah. I get, that was the first time uh, and he was like threatening me and like, and I was like, I think I was just so disarmed by it. It, was, yeah, yeah. it wasn't like I was like, in that, in that moment, like, damn, what a race, you know, what, what a racist. And then yeah, yeah. I was just more like, what the fuck? What was, what was that? Yeah, they, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not always blatantly in your face, and that can those reactions are 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 too like I'm gonna do this or I would do that, or then sometimes you just black out, right? But yeah, it's not always movie racism, right? <laughs> that was not a movie. That was that was the yeah, 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 yeah. the closest one I got. I've definitely had movie racism, or like then a lot of the times it's just like it's a feeling, you know, it's a feeling. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, a vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's okay. a it's a it's a paranoia because you're like, is it? <laughs> 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 is it either, my tripping or really yeah. is it? Is it something? That's why it's always like, you really need to be in this aisle right now, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and she might even she was, like, was just over there right. until I was over here. It's like, ah, right, right. yeah, yeah, out of words, you couldn't pull over. Yeah. <laughs> it's your job to give me a ride, but I will. I said, right, right, right. Work. But yeah. sometimes, yeah, it is movie. So. All right, so you you worked your way. You were supposed to go to MIT. Um, no, not again. No, I wasn't that. I wasn't that sharp. Oh no, not MIT. That's you that's Timmy. Uh, but you're at UCLA, electrical engineer. I did that. I did that. I got my master's. I worked for a minute. I moved up to the Bay Area. I worked at another um, startup. I should make. I, I I had attempted a startup of my own with Timmy Tope. We were roommates back then. He moved from MIT back to LA. We had a nice little apartment in Santa Monica, like a mile from the beach. Oof. I was doing my masters and we were like, let's do a startup. He was like, come on, man, let's stop bullshitting. Stop going out of the weekend. Let's grind. I was like, okay, I just want to, I, I just worked hard. I thought we would get a little bit of, but so we did a startup. Then, and then he, you know, okay. I did a pat out, but it was a great experience. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what, then, what was it ultimately? What was the dream at the, at the moment? 
for that for that particular that startup for that particular <laughs> it was called Flix on Campus. Okay, and the, the the idea was we like to think it was ahead of time. And that's why sure, I sure. I, I think I think I feel where this could possibly be going. It was, it was, it was basically like this, the idea back then. Yeah, you know, uh, college kids would bring all their DVDs from home into their dorm rooms. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I could like ask. Like that was a thing. I remember, I remember, you know what I mean? Like people, people had their DVDs in the room, and we were like, "Oh, what if we created, you know, a system that allows people to rent their own DVDs to each other and we'll profit from it?" Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, so you're telling me Netflix really yeah. attacking your stock? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we said yeah. it here. Said it right here. <laughs> all right, we about to get all the money. But Netflix, watch out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, what um. It was fun, you know. It was yeah. an experience, and then I worked for worked for an engineer for an engineering company up in the Bay Area. Okay, um, and so there are a few things, you know, a few things happened. One, I started becoming a little bit more politically aware. Okay, right? and you know, this is just in general. I've always been interested in politics, social yes. issues, just from the house I lived in, just being Iranian, right? Of course, you're talking about that stuff. Um, but you know, it was kind of like somewhat my identity when I was an undergrad. I wasn't interested in stuff, but I wasn't I wasn't uh, aware enough, for instance, to understand the role of the military, like I mentioned earlier, mm. into engineer, right? And and the company I was working for in the Bay Area, I was like, well, damn, they got military contracts too. Like it's, they're everywhere, mm. right? Mm. And I, there's something about the idea of me as a you know Iranian guy, Middle Eastern guy, anti-war dude, you know, not I'm not you know. It's just sitting in the U.S. going and trying to save democracies in the Middle East. Yeah, no, it's not my. That's, and I have family there. Like I have, like not. It's not like some distant thing. Like I have, you know, at the time my grandmother lived there. Um, my cousins, and my aunts, who I communicate with, and I was going to make money from a company that um, makes money from a war, right? And, and and like and the prospect of war with Iran is always has always been looming to me. Oops. In this very moment, we're, we're, we're speaking on right now, like. Once again, it's looming. It's right around the corner. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean a lot of people would say we're already in a bi proxy war, you know, with with um yeah through yeah through other means, right? It's not uh, is it is it uh, weapon supplies to like uh, not Russia, but it, is it Russia? Who, who does Iran supply weapons to, or who the reality yeah, yeah. that's from? Well, no. So also right now too, isn't the um, isn't there an issue with like the uh, what's that what's that channel that canal that goes through the peninsula by Egypt? And shit, I was not a specific geography. Like this is like this is a guy I saw my dad would ask me on weekends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 this is like but yeah. yeah. So, no, but yeah, it's a, it's a it's a hot zone right now. But now no, I'm listening. So yeah, yeah. No, um, I don't know where we were, but uh. So this is yeah, this is the context. Oh, so I'm working at that company, and I start, I start feeling like you know, that's a problem for me, you know. And, yeah, and I was doing education work. Uh, so I started doing. I was doing work in, in community context, like boys and girls clubs, and I was starting to like contrast. Right? I was starting. I was like, and I was like really interested in. And I was doing like science and tech tutoring programs, and I was trying to figure out how to put them together um, with schools and and, and UC Berkeley being, you know. Uh, down the street from the company I worked at, right? Um, and so these kinds of issues, I was like, man, I want to go into education. I just, at some point, I, I just, it just, a light bulb went off and I was like, I'm enjoying what I'm doing when I leave my engineering gig. Mm-hmm. And I was like, kind of, I've kind of been obsessed with it since then to this day. You know, like, mm-hmm. uh, like just thinking about, uh, all the different layers of education and what I had to do and how I could contribute it and, and, and who's doing the work already when you built from that and just, and just really thinking about education is like like the civil rights issue of our time okay right be like wow like okay there's a lot of things wrong in society but like the fact that like kids are getting such a deeply unequal educational experience in America and it cuts you know it, it it's, it's racial and it's class and it's like uh, and it's like wow, that's that's some that's some that's a place to to work. And there's so many groups doing work right already around those issues. So I kind of hitched my wagon to that, you know, to that. We're on the board of something like the diversity and inclusion, um, some kind of. 
I do a lot of yeah, whatever you, you said something on my profile or something. Yeah, yeah. I've done stuff. Yeah, I mean, I was at my first professor job was at uh, it was at UT Austin. Okay, and I was like associate director of diversity and inclusion for the STEM Center. Mm-hmm. And you know, I do you know diversity and it's like a it's like a bad word nowadays. It's such a political. It's, it's become such a political word. Diversity. <laughs> we, we we look at that as such a watered down word. <laughs> sure, that's the way that, that I've been thinking about diversity, and now all of a sudden it's like uh, oh, it's a high. It's a political high issue. Well, it's really something like uh, George Soros. I want to say that has like the DEI scores that were implemented in like a lot of what is it Fortune five hundred companies and and. Right, am I? Am I? No, I could be right. That, no, no, I could be yeah. right. I'm not. I'm not aware of it. So, and are those used to give? Is it like the higher you are? I think it. It's basically like a report card for for companies. I mean, so, I mean, you take like a Disney or whatever, mm-hmm. and right, then they just or even take what is it the Oscars? Like mm-hmm. anymore? Like if you're even eligible to win an Oscar, you have to have diversity inclusion and, and what have like right. it has to your movie has to have this kind of person that kind of person. and now there's such a backlash against all of that right we're, right we're in the moment and same in same in universities right like literally it's so so yeah we should mark the moment right we're in we're like in a very crazy moment with respect to diversity at higher ed right. and just in society but yeah but that's my work though so i come i come up into doing education from from an interest in diversity uh, but not just diversity uh, an interest in politics an interest in like okay we want kids to get into stem cool but for what like what is what is like what's the end game and so like a lot of my work a lot of people i hang out with my crowd in education and the people who are like look diversity and inclusion are are excellent you know uh, understandable goals but like we should also be asking bigger questions around like the um the deeper meaning of engineering or like you know a kid's building computer science like for what end so they can go work for google you know what I mean, or or is there a different sort of way to to just you know to kind of frame the conversation from the beginning with the kids, so that to make it sexy yeah, to make it a little sexy, yeah, make it a little sexy. Yeah, uh, like you know, I, if, if 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 the people I'm paying attention to are flashy, gaudy, doing whatever they're doing on the socials, or playing ball, or rabbit, we got bars. Why am I gonna buckle down for STEM? There you go. Even though at the end of the day, that bankroll that you get from that, or you know, like all the possibilities that come from that, a comfortable life that you live, right, right. on the cutting edge of yeah. of tomorrow's technology. Sure, in hindsight, you could say that when you're like my age, but if I'm 16, unless my parents are like poking me with a stick in that direction, I'm just. No. Cool kid, random off the block. Right. It's like, like hey. kind of why, how is STEM sexy? Tell me again. Right, right, right. So this is, okay, so this is crazy. Yeah, like all that is true. And I, I'm going to um, uh, mention, so my first book is coming out. Mm-hmm. And, and it's and it's and it coming out like in a year and a half. It's like my first has an academic book. Okay. But it's about, if I can just real quick digress to it. Would you just yeah, look? Yeah, because it connects to... Uh, it connects exactly to this point of like STEM being sexy. We don't talk about it in that language in the book, but uh, so the book is about uh, Iranian engineering students. Mm-hmm. That, I guess it's like under the what could be less sexy, what could be less sexy. But the reason the reason why um, the book even exists is because the meaning of of, of of being an engineer, being STEM person, is one eighty what it means here. So here it has like this nerdy, like unsexy, you know, like association, like, you know, to your point, right? To how I described it. In, in, in Iran, like if you are like a, like, like on some political radical shit or on some student movement shit, which you are, you're an engineering, you're an engineering student. And it's, mm. and it's, and like the same way and that's interesting from a Western perspective, mm. it's so ingrained in the culture, like in the cultural, universe uh, uh, uh i can say for sure in iran it's probably other countries as well it's like being engineering like ah, it's like the it's it's, it's swagging yeah you know it's like i'm uh and i'm like i'm i'm it's not like oh i'm just some fucking esoteric guy who knows about like you know yeah, your yeah. software no like it's like i can't get a date i've written books on the weekend uh, right and it's, it's like it's, it, it could be further from that well, okay. uh, and so, but yeah, man, not to, not to digress, but that's, um, please digress. Yeah, digress. I do have one question about please. it. So, uh, what we were talking about in the intro, 
pre the shot when Iran was the Vegas of of that area of the Middle East. <laughs> now, if that had continued, and let's say you know Iran would have stayed on that trajectory and became the Dubai, right? The early Dubai of its time, like so. I guess what I'm trying to draw the parallel to is, yeah, that's not a value that we hold high in America, but America is already like our major export at, at this point in time. One of our major export is stock, is entertainment, right? Is, right. The gaudy is the, you know, is the look at me. I'm right. I'm the high kid on the block. I'm the cool one. And look at my stars. Look at our athletes. Look at our this and that. The third. That is a legitimate export, right? Absolutely. Like you're, you're going to turn on and see break dancing anywhere. You're going to turn it on. There was the way hip hop is child. Sure, sure. Yeah. You're, you're, and, and just, I mean, not just hip hop, but pop culture in general. It is. Right. You know, it, I, I would still think it's pretty up there. I'm not still in the lead. Now, there's other people economically doing better. Yeah. Definitely some people academically doing better. There yeah. are, you know, people with, with a whole lot of other things. But I, that is like a value, even though mathematically, if you were in STEM, you would go, your chances of making <laughs> are a lot less than my chances of making six figures a year in STEM after I graduate. I mean, I mean uh, that's the kind of thought process of people out here, young people. Right. When I turn on my, you know, if, I, if I'm young, if I'm in your class and I turn on my uh, 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 TikTok, right. the chances that my algorithm is going to show me somebody getting an A plus on their trigonometry in work versus Kyrie Irving, you know, like they're cracking somebody's ankle in half mm-hmm. and it goes to roll. I mean, like, I, 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 Kyrie I, I don't know. Kyrie fan. No, I, I, I absolutely <laughs> can't stand it. Okay. I'm a duty. I'm a, I'm a target. Okay. So I'm actually sorry. Uh, I, I was talking about those 30 people that watch that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, like, so, so Cat Williams does 50 million, 60 million in views right. for, for talking loose. Right and 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 you know to just say whatever. Was I the try. Point. I try to. He, I try to watch the his friend on. Like who the hell? Like do you watch a little the two hour two hour? I I, I did. I mean, for that's me. It's in it's it's my career. You got right. But here's what here's what here's what blew my mind is that I go to a bar down the street. It's owned by a sixteen something year old um, old school Greek dude. Okay. He don't know nothing from nothing. He owns right. five bars. He plays pool to like a, a level where you like, man, like you probably had somebody had to chop off their pinky. Like you, you probably won like a Cadillac, like <laughs> off of how good you are playing pool. Right. And whatever else he's into, right? Right. I went and I just happened to see him at his, one of his bars and we sat down and played a pool game. And we don't really talk about nothing at all. And he was like, "You guess I can't worry." He's like, "I don't understand why." But yeah, like, what the fuck are you doing? No worry about it. You read me. You, you read me well. <laughs> How many TED talks mm. you get to ten minutes? Oh, not even close. Are they? Not so I mean, I think I, I like where you're going with this because yeah, I think. See, so, yeah, well, I guess where are you going with the fact? I, I kind of have an assumption, but. So I'm I'm actually t- uh, trying to circle back uh, to your book and and letting me know what what's what can we expect, man. So it's so first of all, it's a it's a book that started off again from like a personal interest. Yeah. So like as a social scientist, that's the best part about about uh, you know, my field. I would say mm-hmm. is it like the openness? I could say. I'm interested in understanding culturally what happened in this part of the world. And if I can justify it and if I can write a grant proposal and I can get money to, to do it and then write it up, then you can do it, you know, but you're rewarded for that as long as you can do it. You can't do it though, but the fuck, that's a weird idea. Yeah, I had my house. But it, but it, you know, at the point where you're like, no, I got funding to do this now. I got a grant. It was successful. Jim, I'm like, now I, I wrote a book proposal to. A prestigious academic press. Mine's coming out with MIT Press. Oh, yeah, you know. Then, then it's like, okay, cool. So, um, it's it's a, it's an academic book. Then I was sort of. I think at one point I wanted it to be. I had dreams of it being like 
more widely read, right? When it comes out, and it's not, even, it's not even out yet, right? But but I think at this point, I've become more clear that like I'm I'm going to do my best to make it accessible to people who are interested. But at the end of the day, it's an academic book. You know what I mean? It's not a talk to the press book. It's not a fair. It's not written for someone who's never you know who doesn't know. It's not written for my mom's ex husband. You know, there's language in there that like you're picking up if you're in the same language, but also like an interest. So like uh, you, you 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 have to have some a pre existing interest and in, okay, a revolution happened there. Okay, there used to be the Shah. I know someone who. I, you know, I went to the school with this Iranian guy who I believe really, was cool as new Reza, but that was before. I remember him telling me about his parents. And so you have to be a curious person to care about Iran. And I think that there's a lot of people in the world right now, like yourself, who who just because of Iran's, uh, you know, dirty deeds in the Middle East uh, and, and and their corruption and the ongoing situation there in general, and they're, and they're like, deep connection to American interests and geopolitics. People are interested in Iran, right? And and so, but this is kind of- Everybody is affected by it. They just don't- Yeah, people, people- Not a lot of people connect the dots past the third or fourth dot. That's true, that's true. So yeah, it's kind of gonna be, you know, my, my, my best hopes for it are that like, more than just my colleagues and a bunch of grad students show up, read it, that my, my hope is that it, Iranians actually, Read, read the book. That's kind of one of, one of the audience, uh, that, you know, one of the audiences that I have in mind, like Iranians, like who, who are not academics or intellectuals or writers, but they're just people who, you know, are maybe 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, mm-hmm. have some deep connection. And, and hopefully they find this as a important little piece of the puzzle to it's Iranian history. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I'd be interested to see. Now, do you just plan to have it in a literary? Uh, uh, um, it's going to be an audio form. Like, are you doing audio books? Are you going to go around and promote it? Are you going to do visuals? Are you going to hit up TED Talk? Are you going to like put it out there in those mediums that catch the attention of people these days? I don't have. I don't have a solid plan, but I'm going to need to have one because the academic publishers mm-hmm. they don't do. I've learned they don't do much of anything to help promote the book no yeah right but it's like i I, I walked into the bookstore in edison um i think bookends and i walked and i was having a conversation with the with the um with the store owner and i was like so i'm a you know i'm a faculty member at northwestern i have a book coming out how what's the i have no idea how do i get my book in this bookshop like well how does that even work and they're like your your putt was my first time doing the whole thing yeah yeah. so she's like your publisher should have already been on that. And so, you know, you're like, but she's like, but what's your publisher? Oh, it's MIT Press, all oh, their academic presses. Man, they're not, they're not about it like that. They're not doing the marketing. So, so a lot of people, what they do, they'll, you know, make a website for the book, try to do some social media promo. Mm-hmm. And then similar to, I think, you know, comedians, I think we should talk more about that connection, right? Yeah, yeah. There's this whole, you know, podcast, academic podcast sort of thing. So, I'm gonna hit up my friends who have podcasts and be like, "Hey, I got you know, my book. Can you invite me to come?" Or my, or my, you know, my, not one of my old mentors, a great professor at Berkeley. He's running a podcast right now in California, bringing in people in education, so I can be like, you know, bring me on. So that that would be the way I would yeah. start. And then I would also basically try to promote myself in, in the sense of getting other universities to invite me to come give talks. Quote. So come give a book talk. Like actually, one of my friends, the same one who I mentioned, I was a guest in his classroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name is Danny Morales Doyle. Excellent, uh, excellent. One of the most um, uh, cutting edge, I would I would say, you know, educate educators in the city of Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a former teacher, science teacher in his neighborhood. Oh, he's gonna kick me for not remembering the name of the neighborhood. It's on the south side, predominantly uh, Mexican American neighborhood. Okay, and. Um, and they say he's a professor now at UIC. His book is coming out, and it's all about teaching science with the social justice lens. Yeah, he does crazy. He does such such amazing stuff. Uh, and I was like, oh, like I'm gonna have him come up to Northwestern and yeah. give and give a talk in front of the faculty. You know, and it's like perfect timing. He put us, you know, and saying, I had your QR code up. I put your QR code up. Yeah, you know. Um, 
So that's, that's kind of what we do. Academics kind of hustle too, because, you know, we don't, the pay isn't like particularly good. It's all right. You know, I can't complain, but it's not like, it's so, but what, what people are doing is all kinds of side. I don't want to call it side hustle. <laughs> that's not C, but they are been doing all kinds of stuff on the side, taking consultancies and serving on this board or giving a talk here, giving a talk there. Yeah. This panel, that panel, this podcast. And so, you know, that's, so you were kind enough to uh, invite me out to your class and have me, you know, speak about comedy at uh, at the university at Northwestern University. Um, and I think we talked about it a little bit. I was like, just in that short amount of time that I had, I got a half a head nod for one of your students, and I was like, I mean, I was having yeah, yeah, the entire world. Like, yeah. I, the, the power of influence is incredible. Tell me what it's like to, you know, and, and do you, have you, have you, you that feeling when you make people laugh? Is there if, if I'm up there, if I'm, if I'm up there just doing jokey jokes, no, but from time to time, I'll get up there and, and depending on if the crowd, if, if the crowd and, and me, if we're creating together and I can really relax or, you know, I got some material that if I don't have time to get to it, then I'll just hit you with the setup punchline and get out of there. But I do have some material where, I, you know, I'm having a point of view. Yeah. Okay. And if people really catch on to that, then I, I do feel like some people come along the way. I want to hear, I want to come back to that point where Eric here is like that. Sure. Yeah. Um, now you're in there throughout the, throughout the school year. Right. Right. Like teaching in today's society. Now you grew up, I mean, you're an 80s, 80s kid, 83. You went to school, and at the time, you know, I'm we're not too far uh, in age. So I remember the computers with the green screen. You know what I mean? I'm little, I don't know y'all in that, but I'm not buying much. So you tell me you got to play Oregon Trail. Of course, I have. I, I have. All right, stop, stop. Now, most mostly Prince of Persia. You know the steps, but fair enough. Fair enough. So look, look, yeah, come on. Yeah, i <laughs> so what what when you're in there do you feel a, a responsibility yeah what is that like well first of all i think i have to make a distinction okay or and you're teaching what oh uh, yeah so that's all i'm saying so so i i teach right now like my main job as an educator in this mm-hmm. stage of my career mm-hmm. is with undergraduate Mm-hmm. and graduate students at Northwestern University. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. And so, and I love it. And it, and it, and it, I, you know, it, ha- it comes with a lot of responsibility and I'll speak to that, but it's very different from say, uh, an educator, like, who, you know, the ones who will teach my kids at the public school in South Evanston okay. or the ones who are, you know, teachers or shout out to all the teachers, uh, and, and you know, public schools we're in Chicago, Chicago public CPS. schools, shout out CPS. Shout out, you know, social workers, people with like in, com- in community, shout out to uh, unsung hero. Shout out to all the uh, educators and, and places like the Boys and Girls Club where I got my start wow. in random community centers. Wow. Pe- people wow. who've been there 20 years, day in, day out, mentoring youth, you know, who are on the margins in a lot of different ways. Sure. That, that, so that's, so yes, I, I, I take the, I take the, you know, the title of, of I'm an educator for short. Sure. And I, and I have um, some solid experience, you know, being an educator in, in a lot of spaces outside of the sure. elite and private university. Uh, and, and that was a different amount of calling. Had, had a, I think you need a greater level of, okay, you know, uh, a, a responsibility. Is it more influential at that stage and in those arenas and areas than it would be, say, with a graduate student, someone that already probably has, like, a, an end point, if not a middle point in their mind. Yeah, I would say so. You know, without, without, like, without, uh, diminishing the importance of, of, like, providing guidance to people who are going to go on and be scholars, like, taking that seriously, like, like my grad students, if I mentor them well, or, or depend on how I mentor them, mm-hmm. they're going to go off and be, you know, academics and teachers and writers. And so I, I have a role in the kind of, you know, thick, thinkers are going to be the sure sure it's not important but if we're going to you know we create a ranking system no I, I i do i do think that the educational work the teachers are doing and then you know, especially in and in, in communities that are you know in, in precarious circumstances like 
Okay. Yeah. But um, but having said all that, I it's like, yeah, I'm teaching undergrads, you know, I'm, I'm teaching uh a lot of rich kids, a lot of elite kids, but not all, right? Like there's there's actually some good, you know, you saw my class, like oh, yeah, uh there's some diversity. I don't know the numbers, I don't know how it breaks down. I don't know, I don't I don't know exactly how well Northwestern does to support working class kids or you know, that kind of thing. Um I bet they're on par with other uh, other elite universities, which is to say it's an exclusionary system, first of all, right? And it's a it's a system designed, you know, based on exclusion. <laughs> mm-hmm. However, the, the kids who do come in, they're given a lot of resources and, uh, and things of that nature. So, um, so your question was, what do I, you know, how do I feel about that responsibility? What did they right? say? What did, what did Spider Man's uncle say? <laughs> oh, the great power, great responsibility. Right. Right. Yeah. So you're walking there, and, yeah. and gra- gra- granted, like my my like if you're i didn't have direction in my life in school or at the undergrad age i was i was be, becoming a comedian <laughs> and mm-hmm. the slower she's but i would imagine if you're invested enough to be at a northwestern university uh leaning then yeah you have somewhat of a plan or somebody has built a plan for right. you to follow right right yes and, and in many ways they're it, it's like an ideal learning environment, right? Like you get like the kids you saw, like I'm I'm just in the middle of uh not grading their midterms. Mm-hmm. Right. And their midterms were the assignment, you know, uh so it's a class like culture and cognition. Sure. They're they're reading about how, you know, culture affects the way we think. And mm-hmm. and the and the the midterm was like write a paper and using sell the course papers. And you could address any contemporary social political issue you want. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and but you got to use the literature. You got to be creative in applying it. Right. I mean, you know, these kids are knocking it out the park. All kinds of interesting. I mean, uh, you know, like they're smart. They're hardworking. A few of them used. A few of them used ChatGPT. Of course. Yeah. Now I wanted to tell you. I think you did a show. Can I say? Or what was it? Surveillance and security and AI or something of that effect. Oh, you saw. You saw my piece. Saw my piece. I have to to read the entire thing. So. Uh, but to bring it back, yeah, so yeah. professor, university, right. and then kaboom, <laughs> AI comes up. Right. A- half of that. What is that bombshell like in the, the faculty uh, arena? Like when you guys are in, in your room, to, you know, in your in your other room uh, talking, and you go, holy oh, shit. Kind of. I mean, like, first of all, yeah, it, OpenAI released, you know, chat GPT-3 in like the whole world went scrambling. Yeah. I, I was like, I, I kind of, you know, it's a trip how much power the small company could, you know, hacks, right? To yeah, the arrow yeah. Oh my God, what are we going to do? You know, in healthcare, to education, to what it is. So, so if people are scrambling, I think there's, they're, they're, I think it's a little more settled now. In the beginning, it was like even more of a frenzy, right? Sure. Uh, and there's all kinds of committees being formed. I'm actually, oh, it's starting to get, you know, more involved in discussions about what this is going to look like at Northwestern and other places, people don't know. There's some people who were like, let's go change the whole game. We have, we have, we have to embrace it. We have to embrace it. And it's going to, if you, if you embrace it as a teacher, you can reimagine your whole curriculum. Mm-hmm. And, and, and like, we, we should be thinking like that. And then there's, there's like people who are really on it, on that, on that kind of enthusiast, you know, some, the academics mm. call them the, the techno optimists, mm. right? I'm just sitting these people. Uh, and then there's, you know, people who there's the hard critics that, that like these, these tools are not only gonna, you know, yeah, okay, they might, some of the kids might cheat. That's the least of our concerns. This is, you know, having climate implication, then it's gonna, you know, it's gonna, these are the same tools that police and militaries use to control people and all that. And, and like on and on. Right. And so, um, have you chosen to camp out of those two? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, like I lean skeptic. I think the fact that that you know AI technologies are controlled mm-hmm. by this by these small private, sometimes big private companies, and it's it's not a democratically you know they're not being the government in charge of it. Right. <laughs> you <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, <laughs> fair enough, fair point. <laughs> no, right. I, but you know, it, it speaks to the whole diversity issue, right? Sure, as tech companies don't have kid, you know, a, a working class kids from the city of Chicago mm. designing the technologies, mm. right? The people designing the, t- the tools 
are we already know. We already know, you know, we already know what it is, right? Mm-hmm. And so and so with that comes human values, the biases, the point of the points of view of these engineers, these computer scientists all all pour into these tools and the blind spots, et cetera. It's not like all yeah, it's, cool. it's not all conspiratorial, but just, you know, it's just by design. So so no, I, I think I lean skeptic. I lean skeptic, but I don't I don't think I think the trans already left the station. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, so I think uh, I'm also in the camp of like, okay, if it's here, then let's not cede all the power to a certain small uh, you know number of people in society to become experts in it or or to steer the conversation. No, let, let, let's democratize it. Let's open it up. Let's let's create opportunities for kids in Chicago, Rogers Park, to yeah. to other neighborhoods to to, to to learn about it, to debate about it, mm-hmm. to have different feelings about it. To understand how it's connected to their experiences with the police, if that if that's the case, to understand how it's you know how it's shaping their neighborhoods, their house, their households, like it's it's here, right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I think w- that's kind of my that's my stump speech that I'm on. You say it's for education. That makes a lot of yeah. sense because yeah, the thing you can do where you plug in some words and then draw the picture of like Goku breakdancing, that's the fruit on the tree, and stem is the garden part. Which doesn't seem sexy until you get to the fruit part, but that takes watering, digging, and, and you know osmosis, all this a long process. Mm-hmm. And it, it, I mean, yeah, to a large degree, that makes them you know more palatable, more more sexy. I get nervous about the day that eventually I'm gonna choose to be left in the dust. Uh, like as far as music goes. I'm already. I'm ancient. What's I'm the most what's, 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 what's modern? What, what's like you're like? I'm sort of in the know because uh, I'm already light skin. I refuse to listen to Drake. <laughs> I, I just can't. I can't <laughs> pigeonhole myself. <laughs> It's like no, it's like even that. I, I don't. I care about Alicia Gallard. Like, it's, yeah, yeah, the word. Like, I, I, I refuse to go that route. But like, I, I stopped watching uh, TV shows after Martin. You know what I mean? Like, I just. So you, I like, like, I, you like what most Def said? You like, you like you agree with his? his, his with Drake? I thought I thought it was hilarious until three days later he was in a skirt for a fashion shoot. So what? He really most Def really you really played yourself most Def. I'm disappointed in you. Like he was I, not not because of what he chose to do. Do what I'm gonna do most stuff. But if you got on somebody's platform and you're like, Drake's not hip hop, and this is what real hip hop is. Brown skin, lady, that a that a lot. Black stars, hip hop, and then you you're in some balloon <laughs> boots and a and a and a, and a colorful skirt. You're like, it's like wait, like, yeah, like wait, skirt. yeah. What side? Like what? What? What, <laughs> what conversation are you trying to have right now? He's trying to he's trying to be print. He's trying to expand. Fair yeah. enough, but not. I mean, for for what he was trying to say, the, the message and the messenger. I don't think they was on the same page most of that. My <laughs> best still got classic joints. <laughs> what? Oh. Um, like there's certain things that I'm already in the rerun mm-hmm. stage of my life, mm-hmm. but when it comes to technology, I I want to try and be as able to to flow in the breeze, malleable as possible, right? Right. Because I I mean human beings, we we still you t- you can actually see it. There's a certain age of people with a cell phone that they still go like this, right, with their pointer finger, yeah, right. because they're used to. Absolutely. Growing up, this was their dominant finger. Mm. And then everybody our age, it's your thumb that you use it. But then even crazier than that is my age. If I'm saying, hey, hit me on my phone, I'm going to go like this. Right. That, 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 that doesn't make sense thing. to kids in your class. What, what, what are you doing? Why are you putting yeah, your thumb where, Yeah. Where is this? Your what how the dorky phone <laughs> that you got that looks like a dumbbell? You know what I mean? Like. Get out of here. That's not, you know what I mean? So there's already aspects Absolutely. that I, I, that's affected my life. But when it comes to like this technology and this AI, I want to be as close to it as possible, being able to change with the tie ups because there's going to be a certain point where the curve is going to be past me, bro. So, right. so you have a healthy skepticism. I have a healthy skepticism. Yeah. The kids in your class. These are what twenty one two three yeah pretty much yeah. <laughs> are are they just like la di da um 
I mean, is there a ha- is there you know, this is the thing I feel like as part of the hype cycle like AI came in like it's gonna change the game K twelve and higher ed and the, and like not that much has changed <laughs> you know what I mean like a year into it but I think I think I you know, I also have two stepdaughters one who's eighteen and one who's twenty one okay so I'm also kind of you know I have a window into like yeah, yeah. culture from them and they, and they definitely you know make fun of me for like not knowing how to do stuff on my phone yeah yeah they're like well, give me that phone like let me let me do this thing yeah yeah um and so i think there is that digital literacy what do they call us uh there's a there's a term for it um i forgot what it is like digital native digital whatever like oh, our okay. generation okay we're coming into we're like kind of visitors into this into the digital land sure. uh so i think just you know i see i see some of the younger kids being more you know more on their phones as a negative thing but they're also probably doing some creative cool things on their on their devices that I'm not always appreciating. And, and there's people who study that. And I, and I think that's dope because I think we should appreciate what they're doing. Otherwise, we're going to sound obsolete. You know what I mean? Yeah, like we're, yeah. we're gonna, so I think it's a both. It's a tension. Like, I think there's things that we can point out that's ridiculous about the way, you know, phones are like, Taking over youth culture and, and their mm-hmm. uh, and and it's way excessive and it's kind of it's worrisome you know as a parent or also young kids to see how this how they can't break away from it you know yeah. steam I, I, yeah it's it's so but I'm in the bathroom mm-hmm. and at my job and there's got they'll be at the urinal oh, I'll pull out the hold out and, like, and to me it just looks like a junkie. Like he might as well like cut a line on the top of uh, of the thing and just do a bump like right there at the thing. Like you couldn't even, bro. That's like, a weird one. That's true. I've seen that. Tell like, I haven't. Done, I mean, I've had a lot of times. He was the rest. Do you know how important it's got to be? And I don't think there's been any right. that important. I'm like, Gil, you're 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 playing you're playing pissy roulette, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're playing, you it's worth it. it. It's worth it. <laughs> Fuck it. And then a little bit, a few drops. Yeah, yeah. I want to scroll on. It's scroll. a legitimate, it's a legitimate drug. It's, like I, I, I yeah. I'm not, you know, I, I didn't do well in any class by far, but by biologically, I have to believe whatever part of your brain that pumps out this feels good. Uh, I love heroin is at play to a degree. Yeah, you know, certain people in their fault. That's real. Yeah, I've, I've actually sat and watched like. Watch myself from outside of myself and go, am I watching a video about somebody watching a video that I just watched to get their opinion mm-hmm. so I can make an opinion about their opinion about the thing That's crazy. that I already watched? Right. Like how far down the rabbit hole into the to yeah. the back and forth mirror am I right now? Right. Like that I don't even want to be comfortable in my own imagination. Right. It's cool. Like I don't right. want to sit here and sketch you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, there's, like, something, there's something tragic about that, right? Yeah. And I, and I find I'm totally guilty of it too. It's not it's not one of these like forgotten. Oh, yeah. Like it's like can I sit can I sit somewhere and just, you know, have a cup of coffee or have a beer or just sit and just chill. No, right? It's like if I have a phone, why would I do that? I'm just gonna and then I'm gonna instead I'm gonna tell my mind, Oh, look at this and, and I'm so yeah, it's it's, it's Is there a kid? Um, or a type of kid that you see, young person, that is the anti that that stays away from. Yeah, I think there's a spectrum. Just like just like amongst people our age, like I see people who are more, you know, enthusiasts and some, and people who are more skeptics even amongst the college students. Mm-hmm. You know, I definitely, I definitely, um, but but you know, but the basics are there, right? Everyone has a laptop. Everyone has a phone. Yeah. Now some of the some of the some of them are doing stuff beyond that and are like making their own apps and doing that kind of thing or or are gonna be more like, oh yeah, I'm gonna try it. You know, I don't I think there's surveys out there that are are trying to capture how how many undergraduate students are messing with, you know, chat GPT. I think it's a lot. I think I think, you know, I think it's pretty prevalent. Now yeah, and, and I'm not saying that they're using it to 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 write their essays. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying they're using it to do a bunch of stuff that we probably don't even know all the stuff they're doing. You know that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so what what do I think we're widened out a little bit, but a question that I have is, and no offense whatsoever, I have ChatGBT. I have Google. Um, 
I have Bing if you're a savage. Um, <laughs> I have Wikipedia. I have a phone mm-hmm. and a laptop. I have an iPad. Why do I need to spend money mm-hmm. to go to college right. or an university right. to be in debt or whatever? And, yes. and is there, <clears throat> and I'm saying right now, Is the institution of school solid? Is it yeah. is it unbreakable? Just just this is the kind of you mean like a societal norm of like everyone going to school and then college as like the past. Sure, yeah, yeah. Because I or, or even if I'm if I'm hiring committee at Facebook, do I care about your academics or am I going to give you this this competency test and mm. on coding? Right. And if you can make a bouncy ball that does all the bouncy ball stuff that I need you to do real quick. And, and I think there's a lot of big bag of money. And I think there's a lot of examples like like that. I remember the, the startup company that I worked for in Berkeley, the lead engineer was really quirky, weird, white dude, super brilliant, super smart. And he, he, he didn't have a college degree and he really kind of like worked, you know, he was very proud of that. Yeah. And he had a, he had a, um, he had a frame like, random like untitled diploma or something in his office to kind of be like fuck you to everyone else in there like i you know i was a little jazz yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but but there's a lot of stories like that of people in uh in tech right at silicon valley who will go but the majority of those companies when they want to get talent the majority of the, of the places where they're getting the talent from is still from the universities right so but sure it's still it's still by moment if I'm uh, if I'm running a company and I need to hire like, work data, you know, data scientists who know how to do like you know certain thing in Python or whatever it is, I'm I'm gonna yeah sure there's people out there on their own you know sitting in their mom's garages eating uh, you know cereal sure. all day and learning how to code and, and are amazing coders but there's a lot more to education too right oh, yes. college there's, there's there's all the social emotional there's the civic all the stuff. How do you sell that? I think your question is a big one, right? Like, like what justifies these, you know, extravagant, uh, off the charts, you know, tuitions that people are playing? I'm still in debt. I'm still in debt from freaking UCLA when I was 19, 20 years old. I'm still paying my debt. You know, that's, that's crazy, right? I'm, 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 that has to be like when we we're talking about how your, your pop and Timmy's pop bought it and then you and him bought it. I figure if you graduate from a university or a school like that, being in debt, how much you're in debt, whenever the government was like, oh, you don't have to pay right now, this whole COVID stuff, like that has to be a bonding experience for, yeah. for academics too, no? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. I, I don't you know. It's like, um, I th- you know, it's, it's definitely it's definitely part of my life. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it, it follow, it's followed me for decades. Um, but so all I have to say, I think there's legitimate questions about like, the politics of higher ed there's real questions around like you know are people getting what they pay for i don't, I don't think those questions are, are are silly yes it's coming right now from like a conservative angle often you know the, the critics of higher ed mm. tend to be you know the critics of dei to just they they swear that we're we're like you know brainwashing all the kids mm. toward bernie sanders um but you know how do you sell that like I have little kids who in 15 years are going to be you know, college eligible. I mentioned I have two stepdaughters, one of them went to Howard, the other is at Stanford right now. Mm-hmm. Like we, so as a parent, sometimes like I, I feel like you really, you could say what you want to say, what do you do as a parent? It's prestigious. And then, and then I still think it holds uh, a great deal of meaning. I was also more so looking at it as the great truck driver question, right? Mm-hmm. Like, is a truck driver 35, 40, 43 years old right now worried about these cars that they're driving themselves? I doubt it. Mm-hmm. But how long? There's an inevitability, it feels like, that human being that has to stop and tinkle and is probably uh, staying awake out that little tinfoil <laughs> bag of goodies in his glove box. <laughs> Not sure, has to sleep you know, 
liable to get into an accident, this, that, and the third. <laughs> How many more years before? Hey, gang, uh, just had the junior meeting real quick. So we have uh, three new members to our fleet. <laughs> uh, about new guys, just new members. They're going to be uh, doing the overnights. Uh, actually, they're going to be doing the 24 hours. So, you know, we're going to cut down some of your rides. I love the deep dives down the route. Down, yeah. down the rabbit hole. So, yeah, all right. I mean, there's a certain level of what What am I not going to be able to ask YouTube or, or anything like that? I'm like, I mean, he, 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 there's a perspective. Like, I trust human beings, human interaction. I trust this conversation. Right. There's somebody right now having a great conversation with Chet. Definitely. Yeah. That's beyond my level, my realm of ability to relate to that. Yeah. But it's how I mean. It's definitely happening. And like, and all kinds, there's all kinds of questions around intimacy and people. Yeah. So that's, I mean, shit. I don't know. I hope, I hope that stuff. I, I hope there's people thinking hard about that stuff so that it doesn't make people crazier, doesn't get it doesn't get, get people sicker. You know, where mental health is a huge thing, right? Right now in society, like um and so I don't know what the future of these <laughs> of these AI tools. I think I'm sure there's people on both sides of the same conversation should be like, oh no, like get everyone a therapist. But like to your point, can you imagine AI therapy? That, that sounds that sounds really soulless and like I would I I, I barely trust my current human or the therapist I'm gonna trust that but for somebody that does believe in it I don't I don't know I think when when you did have me in class I was like I think it's wrong but I could be wrong you know who is to say also I want to shout you out it, it was great how you you know like you were you were like Doing you, you were doing a yeah, comedian. Yeah, yeah. You were you were doing the set. You were doing a set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know you were gonna do a set. You I was, you know, was trying to do a set, but I'm like, I can't do it. Look at all these faces. <laughs> I feel like you decided on a spot. You're like, fuck. You're like, fuck it. I'm gonna do a set. But then they would have the but was like they would pop out of. They would like you would do like a few jokes, and then a student would raise their hand and be like, um, excuse me, can you? Uh, yeah, that was fine. No, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I, was like, I, was, I, was, I love it. Everyone was doing what they know how to do. I was, yeah, well, I was like, wait, wait. So you, you did a great job of like both uh, making the whole thing fun, humorous, but also every once in a while switching and, and talking to them and there, you know, yeah, that, I, so that, I appreciate that. Now, I truly yeah. appreciate that opportunity. Uh, my, my final question before we get out of yeah. you are on the cutting edge of the people of tomorrow, the, the future bosses, the future influencers, the future. Uh, I mean, the world in a, in a, in a grand scheme of perspective. Are you optimistic? What does the future hold with, with this, this, this new, this new generation coming up? I got, I gotta be, man. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a teacher. I'm a parent of, of a young woman, a teenager and, and three young kids. Like I, uh, that's my, that's my, my, my most in, intense aspect of my life is with, with, you know, with my family, you know what I mean. So like, yeah, yeah. So I, I think I'm, I'm, and I think that's just part of my nature too. You know, I'm. Uh, I mean, I think what, one thing I'll say concretely that that, that does you know go towards optimism. Mm -hmm. The college students and my classes are are way smarter and more sensitive to. And we've talked about some of the excesses, and, there, and there's that, but there's also some of the things that they care about. Like I'm proud of that generation too. Like even if we, you know, touch on um, uh, this real quick, <laughs> I'm about to get messy with it. But like the Israel and what's going on in Gaza and the war on Gaza, sure, the young people are the moral compass, right? And they and like they and 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 it's like they're 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 you know on climate justice, on Palestine, on on so many on racial equity, on so many issues. Who's 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 leading? So it's like, yeah, they have excesses and they get kind of annoying at times in terms yeah. of how they, you know, how uh, how they go out doing what they do. But like ultimately, like they're they're on to some stuff, uh, even as they're on their phones. You know what I mean? So, so I think that yeah, I think there's some there's some real now. Like imagine it, it could be a completely different situation, right? It could be like they're uninterested in the climate. They're not protesting like racial inequality. They're like, fuck it, you know. Thousands of kids are getting slaughtered in Gaza. So, no, they're not. They're not doing. And so, so it's like I want to give credit where 
where it's due to, you know what I mean? Like is this, is this generation, <clears throat> would you say they're more influential or more influenced? And I got to think about that some more, like in terms of, cause this, this little thing that I have in my pocket and I open it up, it's telling me a lot of things. The majority of the time it's telling me what I already want to see, no doubt, or yeah. what it thinks I want to see. Yeah. Right. Or if I click on one thing, you know, I watch 45 minutes of X, Y, Z, the next time I turn on my phone, it's going to be like, oh, that's what you wanted. Well, here's 18 more of that same toy. I guess there's two. So there's, in terms of like where we're at with young people, right? Yeah. On the one hand, they're, they're in a, they're in a very, you know, bad situation when it comes to like phones and tech, right? They are being impacted. Like they're, they're depressed. I think, I think it's pretty conclusive evidence right now. They're, they're ground zero. They're like the, their, their mental health, like they're more depressed than we were. Like I think, I think there's, uh, I think there's a, a good amount of evidence to support the like the pressure rates are, are much higher. And there's a lot of evidence to link that to technology. And, and well, that's a, that's not optimistic, right? We got to wait another 20 years for them to have what's going to have the maturity to reflect back and do, you know, enough knowledge and right. reporting and understanding. But, 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 the, but the, my, the hopeful side to that is that they're also the generation that sort of made, you know, like see the therapist. Like yeah, a cool thing, or 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 like or like you know you know you know mental health a topic that like people should talk about and uh, it's it's kind of gone mainstream and I think I think credits due to the young generation they 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 they're, they're uh, you know paying attention to disability justice and climate justice and mm. and indigenous right all these you know um, all these issues that I think are cutting edge societally the young people are in it you know so as much as they. <laughs> And they know the hell out of me sometimes. As much as we should worry about them, and I think you know. Oh yeah, no, I mean I, I, I'm right there with you, man. I have to be optimistic, but please take a moment out, uh, let the people know uh, if you have any plugs. Tell them uh, about the book coming out. Uh, plug your sub uh, your Substack um, or any other plugs that you have, man. You're a, a fan of comedy, which I think is ridiculously dope that's how we ended up uh coming across each other man that's just a lot of great mutual respect so if you could please uh give any plugs that you have All right thank you this is a quick thank you to uh to you mike yeah i'm a huge fan of comedy and part of it is is i, I kind of prove it to myself in this conversation i think comments are so smart the good ones like yourself but it's like anything right there's a lot of it's like anything, right? there's, there's it. so now as i've gone i'm like man i, I could have stayed home <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't have to say slip to girl. I was like, I don't I was laugh back to last night. So I was like, you had to um I don't know I'm a plug there. <laughs> but same thing in my world, right? So you know, so um plugs, uh see my name is hard to 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 spell. So you gotta put up part of the That's what you so yeah, there we go. So Sapera McKeel is my name. You can look me up on Substack, S E P E H R. V A K I L. I do some writing on there. My book coming out um, with two, my two co-authors, Mina um, Khan Larzadeh and Mekhi Ganjavi. Uh, the book is coming out in spring 2025. It's called Revolutionary Engineers: Learning Activism, Learning Activism and Politics uh, at AMUT 1966 to 1979. So that's coming out in a few years. Like maybe, maybe you know. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put it out on social media. And things like that, but I appreciate this conversation to just kind of talk freely about oh, yeah. a range of issues. We kind of went we so life is very late. Um, Sapir, uh, Iranian born, Chicago made man. I, I dig it, baby. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, this has been the real rap podcast. Don't give me the lie on what episode it says. If you've been watching since season one, you know, I never get the episodes right, but I have it all in the uh, the stuff. Uh, down there, but this is what it is, man. This is a new spot. So, uh, first episode, I had to hit y'all with something special, and that's this gentleman leading the new generation that's going to be taking care of us when we're in diapers. But we're going to get back to the debauchery um, soon enough. I'll start getting my comedy friends uh, out of here so we can talk about uh, anything. Expect this to be uh, a more regular basis that we're going to be pumping out the shows, and then also expect future interesting guests and i'm always going to be uh comics talking crazy comic stuff man so 
Once again, I love each and every one of y'all, the ones that y'all stuck around with me uh, and the new ones that are coming through. It's been a Real Rap Podcast. Love you. Man. Woo! Uh, that was so daring. I was like doing work so react. Oh, dude.